It was a quiet Sunday afternoon. The Timberwolves had just beaten the Lakers at home in the blowout, and no one suspected that general manager Scott Layden's visit to the coach's office would be anything but a nice congratulatory pat on the back. Instead, it was a don't let the door hit you on the way out kind of thing. And before you knew it, word had spread that head coach and president Tom Thibodeau had been fired. Alongside Layden was CEO Ethan Casson, who was responsible for the business and marketing of the team. His presence indicated that this wasn't simply a coaching issue of X's and O's or a difference in philosophy. This ran deeper into Thibodeau's reluctance to do anything non-basketball related to help the team gain a foothold in a crowded Minneapolis market. Of course, doing the dance with the marketing team is a big part of the job, and Thibodeau clearly wanted to focus on all basketball all the time. So let's look at the pitfalls that led to his downfall. First off, it never helps your case when the owner of a team tells you to trade a player and you sit on your hands for months. Teams started dealing directly with Glenn Taylor, and while it all might have been a negotiating tactic, in hindsight, it was the beginning of the end. Kudos to Thibodeau for pulling off a very good trade in the end. They got back two quality players that jump-started the season for them. In fact, with Butler in the lineup for the first 13 games, the Timberwolves' defense ranked 29th. Since then, it's been ranked 10th, with Covington proving a revelation to their defense, providing a much more meaningful impact on that end than Butler. A serious issue that has plagued Thibodeau's coaching throughout his career is his inability to manage minutes. In an effort to win every single game, he became convinced he needed to play his starters heavy minutes, and time and again, we saw debilitating injuries befall players at the top of his rotation. In an era where science shows a strong correlation to extended minutes and injuries, Tibbs continued to ignore the warnings from above and below, and nowhere is this more apparent than with Derrick Rose. Back in Chicago, he suffered a series of devastating non-contact knee injuries. And while much has to do with his insanely athletic forays to the hoop and problematic landings, the extended minutes couldn't possibly have helped. Cut to this year, where Rose is having a transcendent season. And at first glance, it doesn't appear that Tibbs was overusing him. But look closer at the minutes played, and you see a disturbing pattern. After erupting for 50 points on Halloween and playing a ridiculous 40 minutes, he left the next game after less than 4 minutes of playing time due to ankle soreness and then missed the following game. You can see the kind of contact he takes on every play, and when he wants to plant and move in a different direction, look how he can't keep his footing and almost falls down. Similar movement pattern on the crossover almost has him fall to the ground again, and it was clear early on that his wheels weren't spinning properly. He played the next four games, but look at his minute count. Over 36 minutes per game coming off a sore ankle. This leads to a missed game due to left knee soreness. Finally, it appeared Thibodeau got the memo. Over the next 17 games, Rose plays them all, and his minutes average out to less than 29. But the team can't get much going, winning 8 and losing 9. Despite key wins against Houston and Portland, they had ugly losses against Phoenix on the road and Detroit at home. In fact, it was that Pistons game that went to overtime that saw Rose's minutes spike to 38, including the last 13 minutes straight. The next game, he didn't have the same burst and explosion, and after 15 minutes, shut it down due to his left ankle, even though it didn't appear to be anything contact related. After missing a game, he comes back for two more and you won't believe how many minutes he played consecutively. To make matters even worse, with the Wolves up 20 in the fourth quarter, Tibbs inserted Rose back into the lineup for six minutes. If you're wondering why he didn't just put Tyus Jones in for him, they were playing alongside each other. The next game, they got beat by the Hawks despite a monster game by Rose, and at the end of regulation, another non-contact injury to his right ankle forced him to miss most of the overtime. 
what appeared to be a minor thing, has led him to be out almost two weeks and miss the last five games. While Rose has missed a ton of games due to injury and overuse, you don't have to if you use the SeatGeek app to buy tickets to any sporting event, concert, or Broadway show. With SeatGeek, they'll scour the internet for the best prices anywhere, and they'll give you a grade for each ticket to let you know how good a deal it is. Best of all, my code BBALL will save you $20 off your first purchase. If you're a Timberwolves fan who's now excited to go see some games, download the SeatGeek app, buy your tickets, and use my code so you can see firsthand how overused Tibbs players get. With Jimmy Butler possibly the best example of this if we correlate high minutes and injuries. We already saw Butler lead the league in minutes in Chicago while playing for Tibbs and routinely not even make it to 70 games played in the season. After a blowout loss to the Rockets where he logged over 42 minutes, out of nowhere, a right knee injury popped up and caused him to miss four games. This led to an exchange between Tibbs and ESPN's Nick Friedel that might be considered hilarious if it wasn't so troubling. He did have the MRI? He may have. Butler went on to play 10 straight games leading up to the All-Star game. He averaged 39 minutes a game with a 46-minute game in the middle and did well enough to earn a spot in the All-Star game. However, in an unprecedented move, he decided not to play at all in the game. It didn't make much sense for a seemingly healthy player to earn this honor, yet not opt to play even four or five minutes, even if he was leading the league in minutes played again. It shouldn't be hard to believe then that in the very next game back, he suffers a completely non-contact injury to his right knee. He puts weight on it while turning and it just collapses on him. This ended up being a meniscus tear. He missed 17 straight games and got back just in time to help win three games in a row to barely make the playoffs. It is worth noting that so far with the Sixers, his minutes have been cut to 31 per game. And while he did miss two games in a row with a groin strain, he's been healthy ever since with merely a respiratory infection causing him to miss the last two games. The environment and culture was certainly an issue last year in Minnesota. First, with Tibbs constantly bellowing out instructions to his team, harping on them in a controlling manner that you could hear from the court mic just from watching Timberwolves games. It's not a secret, as even Tyron Liu gave us a pretty good impersonation. Well, that's just who he is, you know? <laughs> this method of coaching undoubtedly graded on the players and led them to tuning him out. Add Butler to this mix, and it became toxic, as Butler used the mainstream media and social media to call out his teammates in a very negative way. All my emotion came out at one time. Was it the right way to do it? No. But I can't control that when I'm out there competing. Like, that's my love of the game. That's raw me. Me at my finest, me at my purest. That's what you're going to get. By removing him from the equation, the cloud was lifted and the team improved, going 15 and 12. But it wasn't enough, as the prospect of empty seats, mediocre play, and an oppressive atmosphere proved too much for the front office to bear. Gone are the coaches who also got president titles. None of these experiments proved fruitful for the teams that tried it. And with Coach Thibodeau, his best role might be where he found the highest success as a defensive coordinator for a player's coach, much like the situation he was in with the Boston Celtics during their title run in 2008. Sports fans, make sure to hit the subscribe button and adjust your settings so you can get notified immediately when we drop another great NBA video. Let us know how you feel with a thumbs up and a comment. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.